Coming up on The Breakfast, resident doctors get ready for an indefinite strike if the government fails to meet their demands within 24 hours. The first vice president of the National Association of Resident Doctors will be joining us this morning to talk about those demands and why a strike is their best option. Also coming up, President Muhammad Buhari's gas plan is out and is aimed at making Nigeria a gas powerhouse. How realizable is this? And what needs to be done to ensure it works? A renowned petroleum engineer would join the show from Wari in Delta State to review the government's plan. And Tiberi goes with the Crocodiles of Lesotho 3 nail in their final qualifier for the Africa Cup of Nations. There will be a review of today's dailies with our guest and, of course, Today in History. Glad to have you join us this morning on The Breakfast. I am Annetta Felix. And I am Osaogi Ogbonwa. And it's another very interesting Wednesday morning, middle of the week. I always call it hump day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to be here again today. Happy birthday to me, by the way. Yeah, I was, come on. I was going to say that, Osaogi. Can you just calm can't down? Believe this. Can't can believe you just, this. Can you just calm down? Can't believe we this. We just said our good mornings. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, Osaogi. Thank you very much. So how old are you today? 36. <laughs> <laughs> Never been ashamed of my age, you know, and I would always neither be have I, neither have I. 36 today, um, and I'm uh, looking forward to another year. You know, my prayers this morning were, you know, in the house, mm -hmm. on the drive to work, you know, when I eventually got to the office, it was just, you know, a lot of, a lot of conversations with myself. Mm. So what, what would you like for your birthday? Day. I can't say it on screen. Oh, wow. It must be really... <laughs> that must be the something. Other... <laughs> I can't say it on camera. So what's your Twitter handle again? Um, it's my name. Yes. It's pretty simple. It's my name with an extra two E's. Okay. So you got that right. Wish me a happy <laughs> birthday, please. Send him hugs and kisses. Gifts if you like. Flowers. Men love flowers, don't they? No, they don't. They don't um, like pink shirts? No, we don't so like pink boxes. shirts. No, we're good. We're good no. without some of all those things. How about a We yacht, like private islands. Private jets. We like things like that. Absolutely. <laughs> gotcha. Good all morning, right. anyway. Welcome again. It's uh, Wednesday, the last day of March 2021. Beautiful, beautiful day today. Thanks again for joining us. We'll be kick-starting today with a very uh, big story about sports. Yes, uh, congratulations to the Super Eagles. Uh, yesterday, we, of course, uh, for those who were able to make it to the Teslim Balogun Stadium, uh, the Super Eagles beat Lesotho uh, three goals to nil. We begin this morning, of course, uh, talking about that win. It was a something that can be described as a comfortable victory with a first-half goal from Victor Sime and uh, two second-half goals from Ogene Kare Tebo and Paul Onwachu. The Eagles ended the qualifying series top of the group table with 14 points uh, and 14 goals from six games, which, of course, is pretty uh, smooth for the Super Eagles. A lot of people maybe had lost faith in them. Mm -hmm. uh, I also got to see a lot of criticism for uh, Gennard Raw, you know, in the build-up to the, you know, this qualifiers. Um, and also the, you know, idea of them going, uh, you know, to play a game on a boat. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of drama that has happened, you know, before this, you know, but congratulations to them. Um, um, per I personally never saw them, um, um, you know, not winning the game against Lesotho. Mm. Um, and I hope that, you know, we can keep the same energy, energy. and keep the same spirit and keep the same winning uh, spirit uh, generally, even when the African Cup of Nations start. Nigeria should be, and I, I don't remember, or I don't know any other reason why we should not be the biggest football nation in Africa. Exactly. Uh, we should be that nation that everybody knows when they come to play, they will lose. We have the manpower, we have the talent, we Absolutely. have the skill. Maybe we need a lot more, you know, in terms of training and investment Absolutely. and all of that. But the fundamentals, really, we do need that. Yes. Or we do have that. We, we, so we've moved from, you know, different eras of Nigeria's football. There's a time when um, our greatest rivals used to be Cameroon um, and maybe a little bit of Ghana. It was mostly Cameroon and Senegal. We had mm -hmm. great rivalries with those nations. Um, back then when Jejo Kocha and Kanu Wanko were still, you know, active members of that team. Um, I remember, you know, those Africa, you know, come of nations and those, you know, those times. But Nigeria always somehow, some way came out on top. Um, we've moved from that era now to an era where we're having the likes of Ogana Karatebo and Victor Sime and I uh, um, can't remember his name now. Um, but, you know, those are the new players. Those are the new guys who currently uh, are responsible, you know, for ensuring that the team gets, to vi you know, to victory. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, you know, somehow, some way may not have the, the class of players that we had in Gigi Okocha's era. Um, you know, with regards to their, their height in world football. But 
we still have a very, 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 very fantastic, fantastic squad, and we have no reason whatsoever. The investments in our sports, mm -hmm. um, once in a while we have, hear of controversies where, um, or controversial issues where, you know, players are not paid or the coach yeah. is not paid and stuff like that. Those ones have continued to plague the, the Nigerian sports industry for a long time. But we still have absolutely no reason why we should not be the biggest football nation in Africa and also be able to develop other sports across the country. There's so much more that we yes. can do, you know, with athletics, um, with, you know, gymnastics. There's so much more. Nigerian Even basketball. Even video gaming. I mean, video gaming has been, you know, when it comes to the Olympics, we hear that that's one of the games that not, that's not been ex accepted, right? Yes. And we know that when it comes to video gaming, Nigerians do love that. Lots of our brothers can testify how our parents, you know, got dragged them from the game house, bit them up for doing all that. But look at people in other countries making money off of that, making a career out of that. So yes, we, we should develop other 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 sports and activities and areas as well. Yes, we should. Yes, and uh, it was great, you know, watching videos of how people celebrated the win. You know, fans really really rejoicing. That's really great, and I think that we should and we can keep that up. Uh, the governor of Lagos State was also um, at the stadium to you know support the team, um, and along with a lot of Lagosians, um, you know there is also conversations about how much you know we are also making from some of these games, how much uh, the uh, Tessin Balogun Stadium will be able to make, you know, mm -hmm. if tickets were go are going to be sold or not, you know, and and you know some of all those things. Uh, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do with developing our sports in Nigeria. Sure. Um, we cannot just be, you know, getting these crumbs. The, you know, local teams, the Aimbas and the Rangers mm -hmm. and the Canopillas and, and the like should have full stadiums every time that they're going to play. The Nigerian, you know, local league, um, you know, it's, it, it should be the, you know, our biggest foundation for players. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't be looking for players who are playing in Ukraine and playing in, in Spain and, and, and England only. There is a local league that we should continue to support um, as you know, our, from our government side, and of course as Nigerians, to ensure that we we build that uh, sports segment. But of course, Wally Scott would um, have his review this morning, sometime um, when the sports um, show yes, starts. Yes, at 9:30 a.m. Do catch that later on. Absolutely. Let's now move to another trending hashtag. It's uh, hashtag Free RCCG Members. It's been trending on social media, and that's because people are campaigning for the release of eight members of the redeemed Christian Church of God who were abducted on Friday. A few of the campaigners are calling on the government and the kidnappers to ensure they're freed, but most are praying to God. That's our game. Yes. Time and time and time again. Do we always have to cry out to the government? Do we always have to beg for our lives? What is the value of the Nigerian life? So that question is um, something that we've heard for decades. Mm -hmm. um, over time, the last couple of years, that question has come up you know, more, more, you know, and more times. What is the value of every single Nigerian life to the Nigerian government? Um, when we can understand and we can answer that question, then it might shed some light on, on you know, how we approach some of these things. In the last 10 years, what has changed with regards to our approach towards our insecurity challenges? In the last few years, now that we've had kidnapping as one of the biggest challenges that Nigeria is dealing with, mm -hmm. what new steps is the Nigerian government taking with our security agencies to develop a better approach um, you know, towards uh, tackling kidnapping? In what ways are things changing you know, so that we can easily track down kidnappers? How many of these kidnappers, when we hear that people have been released or have been set free, either because they paid ransom or because the government was able to storm the, the they call it kidnappers' den, how many of these persons have been arrested and, of course, will continue to you know, um, give the government information on more and more of these um, um, kidnappers across the country? How have we let Nigeria to become such a, dare me to say, safe haven for kidnappers? Mm -hmm. um, and once again, what is the value of the Nigerian life? In a sane society, I would say this, in a sane society, no eight you know, uh, citizens of that country, no uh, you know, 29, remember the, the, the one in Kaduna is still um, um, going, uh, 29 students, no you know, um, you know, um, of those you know, numbers would be kidnapped and the country would just move on. Remember we spoke to a father, one of the students um, last week, I believe. We as Nigerians have moved on from 
you know, that incident. We seem to forget that those people are still in captivity. Same way this Redeemed Christian Church of God, um, you know, members, we as Nigerians seem to have forgotten because it has happened so many times and we no longer, we seem to have developed, you know, or become numb to some of these things. So what is the value of the Nigerian life to a Nigerian? What is the value of a Nigerian life to the Nigerian government? I saw this morning, um, I need to confirm what state that was, where a person was burnt in the middle of the street because he apparently had um, insulted the Prophet um, Muhammad. It, I, I need to confirm, I think, Bauchi State. Once again, what is the value of the Nigerian life? If we live in a society where a person can be burnt alive in the middle of the road, simply you know, because, well, he said some things that he should have said about the Prophet, then why should any other Nigerian care who's you know, in ca captivity if we will kill our own? And at the same time, why should the government? Because in a situation like this, and it goes all the way back to the Apo, um, not, uh, size Apo 6, now the one that happened in Portaco, where those boys, the four boys, Alu, um, Alu four. 4. It goes all the way back to situations like that. Mm -hmm. Why is the Nigerian life not valued on a level where when, a sit when something happens like this, this Bauchi incident now, every single person who um, was responsible involved, yeah. should be in bars right now, should be under arrest, and should be questioned. We don't have a situation like that. And so when eight members of a church are kidnapped, we will pray. Because exactly. we don't live in a society where we are entirely sure that the government will drop every other thing you know, that it's doing and ensure that those people are, are rescued. Who is next to be kidnapped? Who is safe you know, in Nigeria today? Who, which person now would boldly be able to travel you know, different routes? The, the, the Lagos State governor put out a message saying that they couldn't make it to Kano for uh, the, uh, the Bolatinibu Colloquium because, you know, the, you know, of timing or some, some excuse like that. How many hours is it from Lagos to Kano, you know, for a governor in a, in a sane society to be able to drive those hours? Three, four hours you, or maximum five hours on the road you'll be there. But first of all, the roads are not good. Neither are they uh, um, safe, you know, to travel. So, once again, what is the value of the Nigerian life to a Nigerian and to the Nigerian government? Hmm. It's actually farther to, to travel from Lagos to the north. It's hours. It takes longer well. than that. Anyway, almost a day journey. But moving on from that, the government needs to know that they have a lot to do. Lots of other pastors have been kidnapped in the past. You see the Christian Association of Nigeria burdened with the task of releasing press statements every other month because a pastor was kidnapped, a pastor was killed, I don't think that's just fair. I don't think that should be happening in a sane society where politicians are living lavish and donating money, you know, at will and doing things like that. I feel that I should feel safe to take a vacation to one of these tourism spots and locations in the north. I shouldn't have to fear that, you know, and that's why other sectors of our economy is failing, like tourism. They are fantastic places in the country, but security or insecurity would not let you visit. Yeah. So we, we, do need, we do have a lot to do and uh, just beyond prayers, beyond asking Nigerians to come together and pray, we do need to do something. Well, we, we know that a number of people kidnapped by armed groups in northern Nigeria are still in captivity. None of the 39 students abducted from the Federal College of Forestry Mechanization in Kaduna is free. And Leah Sharibu, who refused to denounce her faith, has been you know, in, in captivity since 2000 and 18. Let's take a break here to discuss off the press with uh, Dimola Akimbola. Do stay with us.